Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Coffee Break Blogging. Now, I want to get started today by saying that there's certain words that I just kind of cringe a little bit in this online marketing space when people use them. And these are words that it's funny how it kind of gets entered into the jargon of, of the way people talk, and they don't really think about what it actually is saying, you know? One of them is the word engage. This word engage is one that we use when it comes to basically talking with people on social media, but we're, who in the right mind goes out into the world and says, I wanna go engage with you, or can we go to a coffee shop and let's engage for a few minutes? It's just a really weird word, but yet in online marketing, people say, well, you gotta go out and engage with your community on social media. You know, that's fine, but in reality, you're basically going and having a conversation, you're talking, right? It's the same thing that we do out in the regular world. It's just that we're doing it on the internet. So, you know, that word engage is one. Another one is when marketers refer to their audience or their readers as their tribe, or even worse, their herd. I hate that one because it's just one of those things. It's like it's almost like they're looking down at their community. Who looks at their community like a herd? And you've got to herd them around like little cattle. It's just not a cool way to look at your own audience. You're, you know, in their tribe. It's just kind of again, it's weird collective mentality. And the thing is. If you look at your audience as one big collective, one big mass, it's going to be really hard to market to them and get and to teach them and, and help them because in reality, not everybody is the same. In the real world, not everybody is the same. So you can't look at everybody as a collective. And so that's why I don't like this word heard. But another one that I really don't like is the word blast, email blast specifically. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is the death of the email blast. Here's the thing. When you subscribe to somebody's list, do you subscribe so that they can blast you? You probably don't. In fact, it's probably a little condescending. And yet marketers talk like this a lot. I'm going to blast my list with something. Okay, so let's talk about this. And we're not just talking about mindset. We're literally talking about how things have changed when it comes to how you do your online marketing. Not only is the idea of blasting your list just a bad way to think about it, and it's kind of inhuman to the subscribers who are on your list, but it also just doesn't work that well anymore, okay? And the truth is that online marketers who haven't adjusted to this are dying off. And it's because you can't just blast your list the same thing on a repetitive basis and have any other effect other than delivery rates dropping, open rates dropping. And, and you get these online marketers who go around and and they brag about the fact that their email list has 100,000 people on it or something. You know, that's great. But if they're just blasting out affiliate offers to that list, chances are only a very small percentage of that 100,000 is actually opening the email. And here's the thing. The size of your list is really only about how many people are actually opening and clicking on things. Just the fact that they're sitting in your database means absolutely nothing. It means nothing. If they're not actually reading what it is that you send them, it's just like they're not even there, okay? So online marketers that are just blasting their list really have very small list, okay? And anything else that they tell you is just, they either don't understand what is going on or they're just blowing smoke up your butt. It's one or the other, okay? So here's the thing. The key about email marketing is not the size of your list, it's not the size of your list. The key is really engagement. It's the fact that they're opening things and clicking on things. Now, I haven't talked a lot about social media, but you may be familiar with the world of Facebook and how they've got this thing called EdgeRink. EdgeRink is an algorithm that they've got built into Facebook, which is the reason why you don't see every single update that all of your friends say. What you will probably notice is that the people that you engage with the most, there's that word, are the ones that you're going to see pop up more often in your newsfeed. 
And it's actually a good thing. You know, marketers who are trying to blast you with marketing email messages or, or Facebook messages, they complain about edge rank because they want their, you know, followers or what have you in order to see everything they ever say. But the real world is that it just ain't the way it works. You know, Facebook is trying to create a newsfeed experience that you actually enjoy. And by that, they show you the stuff that you're most likely to want to see. And one of the big ways that they determine that is the things that you actually engage with on Facebook, okay? The people that you converse with, the people that you comment with, the people that you like their post on, on, uh, their news, on your news feed. They're going to show that to you more often. Now, that exact same situation with EdgeRank carries over into the world of email as well. It's not called edge rank. In fact, it works a little differently, but the same basic outcome is there. If you were get, you could be on somebody's list, but if you're not ever opening their emails, you're not ever clicking on anything and just not, you're just not engaged with that person at all, then Gmail and, and Outlook.com and these guys, they're just not going to show you those messages as much. And so open rates and click-through rates with you as the email marketer, those are the metrics that are a hell of a lot more important than the size of your list, okay? So don't worry about the size of your list. And there's many, many cases out there where people who have uh, lists that are quote-unquote small have outperformed and outsold marketers that have much larger lists. And it's because those people with much larger lists are probably not actually engaging their list very well. And you see this particularly in the affiliate marketing space where you sign up for somebody's lead magnet and then all they do is blast you affiliate offers. Well, that sucks. There's no value proposition there. So why is anybody going to read your stuff? If they're still on the database, you're, you know, you're lucky they haven't just unsubscribed. It's probably just because they're not opening your stuff. But they're definitely not seeing what you're sending, so they might as well not even be there. Okay. So the big thing here is instead of thinking about just linear email lists and how big your list is and stuff like that, you need to be thinking in terms of community. You need to be thinking about community, not your list, okay? And that community is not only on your email list. They're actually spread around in different places. They're on your Facebook groups. They're on your Facebook pages, maybe even your personal profile, your Twitter account. Maybe they're connected to you on LinkedIn, maybe on Pinterest. Maybe they're in your retargeting list. And they're in there, and you're they're seeing your banner ads out there. Maybe they're on Google Plus, so anytime you post something, they're you're, they're getting a little notification right there inside their Gmail account. There's multiple touch points out there, and these people can be in your community and engaged with you in many different places. And the thing is, the more that they're engaged with your brand, I'm just going to keep using that word "engage" here because it is like the the terminology that we're all using. It, the more they're engaged with you, the more um, effect is going to be had. You're not just blasting them with stuff. That's old school marketing. That's old school marketing is to be thinking about just exposing them to your message. No, you, you, you want them to be exposed to your message, but you want them to actually engage with it, act on it, click on it. You know, that's what you want. And it doesn't really matter where they do that from. It doesn't matter if they click on your link in your email or if they click on your link from Twitter, they're still an engaged member of your community. The truth of the matter is that online marketing is not nice and linear, okay? It's not one of those things to where it's as simple as get them to your blog, get them onto your email list, that's it, you know? This is a 3D world these days. It's not nice and linear anymore. And there's multiple ways that, that they can become a member of your community. But wherever they happen to be, you want them to be engaged with you and your brand. And that means you're going to have conversations with them. And that can take place in email as well. So let's back up just a little bit and let's reiterate the, the point here that with email, the point is engagement. And you want them to open your emails and you want them to click on your emails. But you also, this word engagement generally means that you're having a conversation. So that means that, yeah, you want people to hit the reply button and actually reply to the emails that you send. Don't send those replies out to a bounce address or a no reply at 
blah.com. Stupidest thing you could ever do. You want to have any emails to your list be like they were coming from you and that every single one opens the door to a potential conversation, okay? Be a real human being because that's the way engagement actually works. Now, another thing I want to make a mention of here is that um, when you have a linear email system like AWeber or MailChimp or stuff like that, where people do get onto email list, it's really easy to get into the mindset of blasting your list because generally that's the way those systems work. You write an email, you hit send, and the same message gets sent to everybody. But I just want you to be aware and looking over the horizon a little bit is that the most ideal way to go is that every single subscriber who's on your list is going to be treated uniquely to them based on the things that they've indicated interest in, the how they're interacting with your stuff, things like that. And the thing is, it does require a more robust email marketing system than AWeber or MailChimp or some of those guys can provide. They're just not set up to do it. The key is to send the right message at the right time to the right person. And in order to do that, that's where we start getting into marketing automation systems on the likes of Entreport or Infusionsoft or Active Campaign. And we talked about uh, marketing automation tools in the last episode, so you can back up and check that out. But you need, to th- you need to see that coming and realize that the future really is being able to have every single person on their own schedule getting email messages from you that you can pre-write, but the thing is they're unique to that particular situation because you set it up that way. And it's a little hard to do that with a with this linear system where everybody gets the same autoresponder sequence and that kind of thing. Okay. So again, keyword here is engagement. If if you are just starting out, you're going to have a linear system. That's fine. But over the horizon, be aware of some of the options like Active Campaign and some of the others that will allow you to set up automated follow-up sequences, but yet they react to what the person is doing and what they're engaging with. Because that is where you get out of the fact that you know, email blasts, they're just not working that well, but move into the world of the fact that unique marketing that's very individual. People are not a collective. They're just not. They are individuals, okay? All right, hopefully that was useful to you. Kind of a mindset type episode here as we end off very soon here, phase three of our overall business building process from Coffee Break Blogging. Uh, we'll be wrapping it up in the next episode, and then we're going to be moving into phase four of our overall business building template, so to speak, that we're covering here on Coffee Break Blogging. We're going to be moving right into the world of traffic. Okay, I want to end off by reminding you of the big blog monetization webinar that I'm doing. You can find that over at blogmonetizationwebinar.com. We're going to be talking all about how to monetize your blog, but do it effectively in today's online world. A lot of bloggers are out there doing it in the old ways. They're doing it in the ways that, quite frankly, people were still talking about back in 2008 and 2009. And I know because I was around back then. In. And it's just the same basic stuff you're seeing, banner ads and, um, you know, guest posting and all the stuff. And the, it, the world has changed. And if you're not aware of how the world has changed and how you need to structure things with your site to accommodate that, to actually enable you to grow, you're going to be at a loss. And we're going to be talking all about that on my free live training. And you can get your seat registered totally free over at blogmonetizationwebinar.com. Okay, see you soon.